Wi-Fi on passenger aircraft is well known for being rather poor performing in terms of throughput, uplink and downlink, as well as the at times cripplingly high latencies which users get while using the Wi-Fi services. And this is because they relied on satellite for connectivity where the data has a colossally long round trip in order to get from the aircraft to the rest of the internet effectively. The European Aviation Network, which is a partnership between Deutsche Telekom and Inmarsat, seeks to resolve this problem by using a combination of ground-based transmitters as well as satellite so that when the aircraft is over land or near land it will then use the ground base stations and when it's above sea and well away from land it will then use the satellite. This has the benefit that when the aircraft is over land it will then get much higher performance because the distance between the aircraft and the internet effectively is much reduced. Meanwhile for the satellite continuity between land masses Inmarsat has launched a new multi-beam satellite solution which will then provide better performance than the satellite systems that it replaces. In terms of spectrum used between the satellite and the aircraft or the base station at the ground and the aircraft it's 2 by 15 megahertz on the S-band which is around 2000 megahertz. There are a network of about 300 ground-based sites in order to provide the extensive coverage across the EU when the plane is above land, which are operated by Deutsche Telekom. I've shown an image of a British Airways aircraft there, which is a picture I took actually quite a long time ago. However, it just happens that British Airways is one of the launch customers of the European Aviation Network. So now we can move on to the mast itself. And this mast that I am showing has a number of operators on it with a legacy six sector orange arrangement which is now decommissioned on the top of the mast and then lower down is the EE and 3 share for 1800 MHz and 2100 MHz and 800 MHz below that. And the European Aviation Network operates at the middle of this tower and it's clearly distinguishable from the normal mobile solar antennas because the European Aviation Network ones are very much smaller and they use custom four-pole antennas which enables four-way receive diversity and it's also possible to note that they are tilted up slightly because clearly they're designed to serve the sky and not the ground below. The RIU's remote radio units are also visible on these pictures and they are made by Nokia or Nokia and once again they'll be quite specialist remote radios in order to operate this network. The aircraft obviously has to have antennas outside of its metallic hull in order to connect to these services and there is one antenna which is used to connect to the satellite based services and one antenna which is used to connect to the ground based stations. The antenna used for the satellite services has a much shorter name of mobile satellite services antenna compared to the rather contrived name for the antenna which connects to the ground based services which they call the Aviation Complementary Ground Component LTE antenna. Quite a mouthful that is. But they're basically the small aerodynamic antennas that are used to connect to these aviation network services. So thanks for watching this video about a European Aviation Network mast. I realise this is a shorter video than they usually are, but I thought it would be interesting just to talk about one of these sites because there are a fair number of them dotted around the place. There's even a map of where the site locations are, which I'll link below for those who are interested, and you might come across one.